ونستعينهونستغفرهونؤمنبهيونتوكلوعليهونعوذبالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا
someone here would say that I have given in charity 70 luxury cars who would do that 70 luxury cars in charity just in one sitting in one gathering 70 slaves free you are free to do whatever you want this is how generous Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an was and also a blessed soul during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an once droughts hit Madinatul Munawwara a lot of heat, no rain what he did was he called Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an and he took hold of the hands of Hazrat Abbas and he lifted up his hands Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was making dua being a khalifa and he said Ya Allah during the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we would make a dua and we would say by the blessing of the luminous face of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam open the heavens for us and bless us with rain and immediately it would start raining and now Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that has passed away Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an what he would do is that he would lift up his hands and he would say Ya Allah we beseech you we ask you we make dua to you that by the face of the uncle of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bless us with rain and on many occasions immediately rain would fall in the city of Madinatul Munawwara dua was immediately accepted so Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an was a very blessed soul in fact whenever Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an would see Hazrat Abbas walking they would dismount from their camels in respect of Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala they would actually dismount from their camels Hazrat Uthman and Hazrat Umar just to show respect to Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an Allahu Akbar he was 88 years of age when he passed away scholars have mentioned that he passed away in the month of Ramadan Allah, in the month of Ramadan as for Hazrat Abbas embracing Islam scholars have a mixed view some have said that he embraced Islam before Makkah was conquered and some hold the opinion that he embraced Islam during the conquest of Makkah Wallahu alam. but he was a Sahabi and a man who had embraced Islam at the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one interesting story has been mentioned in the book of a hadith during the battle of Badr when the Muslims defeated the mushrikeen of Makkah many of them were killed and many were taken as prisoners one from amongst the many prisoners was also the uncle of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Abbas was taken as a prisoner what the companions did was they, they had tied the hands of all the prisoners very tightly with ropes and had uh, stationed them in one enclosure, in one room. This is where you stay. Scholars have mentioned that the night when all of the prisoners were taken, they noticed that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very restless, unsettled. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not shut his eyes to go to sleep. And many of the companions could see this. One Sahabi came to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, is something bothering you? That today we notice that you can't sleep. Today we notice that you are unsettled. What is giving you grief, Ya Rasulullah? How can we assist you? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, How can I sleep when I can hear the groaning of my uncle Abbas <coughs> how can I sleep when I can hear the groaning of my uncle Abbas now because Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an's hands were tied with a rope the ropes were tied very tightly to the hands and this was giving a lot of pain to Hazrat Abbas and because of that he was groaning every time he would move he would groan they say insan karahta hai na kata ah in that similar manner he was groaning 
and Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could hear this. Immediately a sahabi stood up and he had loosened the ropes from the hands of Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an and only then Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rested and went to sleep. So Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an a very distinguished famous sahabi and also the uncle of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away during the Khilafat of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an and it was only Hazrat Uthman that had the privilege to perform the janaza namaz of Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala a brief account of some of these great great individuals as Muslims my respected brothers we must have some understanding of Islamic history of understanding who were the Muslimin and the companions and who were related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam another uh, a giant character from amongst the companions of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. though physically when we describe him he seems to be very physically very weak slim, not very tall short, but Allahu Akbar as far as Iman is concerned he was like an unshakable mountain he was like an unshakable mountain. That was the faith of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Brothers might recall, he was so brave in the battlefield that it was Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who slit the throat of Abu Jahl during the battle of Badr. When the two young companions said that, Uncle, can you show us where Abu Jahl is? And initially, the scourge that came was from the two young companions but the finishing off was from Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood now, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood wasn't tall Abu Jahl was a giant and Abu Jahl was there and Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood climbed on top of him and so Abu Jahl opened his eyes and said you do you know who you have climbed on top of Abu Jahl the great warrior and Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masud took a blade out, a knife and started to cut the throat of Abu Jahl to decapitate him and, and then he said that if you cut my throat make sure you cut it from the lower section so when you put the heads in front of your leader Muhammad bin Abdullah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah he, the takabbur, the pride even then at, at the time of death even Fir'aun said, I bring faith upon the Lord of Musa and Harun alayhi salam. But Abu Jahl said, when you measure the heads uh, in front of your leader Muhammad bin Abdullah, make sure my head is at the highest level. Uh, so cut my throat from the lower section here. So you have a, a, a good measure of my throat and therefore my head will be higher, much higher in level than the others. Allahu Akbar. And so Abdullah ibn Masud radiallahu ta'ala and killed Abu Jal. So he was a very brave soldier, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masud radiallahu ta'ala an. A great Sahabi. Scholars have mentioned he is the Khadim of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahibu Siwak was the title given to him. The man who took care of all the miswaks of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the different types of miswak. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was the man who was the keeper of the miswak and also the slippers of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, if the companions, or in fact, if brothers, uh, individuals came from another part of Madinatul Munawwara, even from uh, the tribes, the Bedouin tribes, if they were to look at Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, they would mistaken him to be one from amongst the Ahl Bayt. He would enter and exit the house of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as if he was from the Ahl Bayt. And this was the permission given to him by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did he embrace Islam? <coughs> Ulama have mentioned a very interesting incident, a story. He was from amongst the very early Muslims. In fact, it is said that he was the fifth member to accept Islam after Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala 
he was employed by a person who gave him the responsibility to look after his goats in a valley to make sure that early in the morning he would take the goats for grazing and bring them back in the evening coincidentally what had happened is that Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an was passing from that valley where Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood was Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw this figure at a distance and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq said let us go to this man it was very very hot Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Abdullah ibn Masood and in the hadith it comes Allah's Nabi said to him Ya Abdullah wouldn't it be good for you that you serve us some milk because it is very very hot extremely hot there were goats there and he said why don't you serve us some milk the Arabs were well known for their hospitality so Abdullah ibn Masood said I can't do this I have been entrusted to look after the goats and this is not my property and anyway none of the goats can produce milk all of the others are completely dry all of the others are completely dry so there is no milk Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there is no milk and Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam touched one goat that was in front of Hazrat uh, Abdullah ibn Masood touched it immediately Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood saw that the others were filling up with milk so much milk that milk was actually secreting from the others and very quickly milk was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he witnessed this mu'jiza, this miracle from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says that I had already become a Muslim then that mu'jiza had opened my heart towards Islam he knew already that Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already made a claim that he was Khatamun Nabiyyin and the last Nabi but he said when I saw this mu'jiza I had no doubt when I saw the face of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I had no doubt and he was now with the Muslimin and from the very early individuals who had embraced Islam Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an is also considered to be Sahibul Qur'an one of the great great scholars in this knowledge of revelation the science of Qur'an as far as Nuzul is concerned how how many verses reve- were revealed to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the verses were revealed to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a great mufassir from amongst the companions of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ulama have mentioned he was the first man to recite Suratul Rahman in front of the Kaaba, for which uh, a group, a mob of the Mushrikeen attacked Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood which gave him severe injuries but he was the first man to read Suratul Rahman and his recitation of the Quran was so sweet and beautiful that many a times Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say to him Abdullah recite in front of me the Quran and he would say Ya Rasulullah the Quran has been revealed to you and you want me to read the Quran in front of you and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say yes I want someone else to recite the Quran in front of me Allahu Akbar Kabira Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an is considered to be a senior sahabi and just before his demise also uh, an incident has been mentioned of his conversation with Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an a very important conversation during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan Hazrat uh, Uthman bin Affan came to see Abdullah ibn Masood who was resting and very ill and so Hazrat Uthman said to him Ya Abdullah ma tashtaki what is giving you trouble tell me and he said zunubi O Uthman I fear of my sins that I might have committed how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with me now this is Abdullah ibn Masood Allah's Nabi once said that if anyone from amongst my companions if I was to appoint 
that individual as my deputy without consultation, without taking the mashwara from anybody, it would be Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. I would appoint him without consultation. That is how much faith Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala. So he said, ma tashtati, what is your problem? He says, I fear of my sins that I might have committed. How will Allah deal with me? And then Hazrat Usman said to him that ma tashtak, ma tashtahi, what is it that you desire? And he said, Rahmatu Rabbi, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Hazrat Usman said to him, Ala amuru laka bi tabibin, if you want, I can call the best doctor in Madinatul Munawwara for you, the best physician. And he laughed and he said, At tabibu amrazani, you know, Uthman, it is the doctors that have made me ill. It is the doctors that have made me ill. Then Hazrat Usman said to him, Ala amuru laka bi atain. If you want, I can uh, make an allowance from, for you from the public treasury. I can give you an allowance. And he said, La hajat ali. I have no need for money. Then Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and said that, Yakunu li banatika min ba'dik. Perhaps it would be better for your daughters. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood had many daughters. He said, it would be better for your daughters after your demise. It is said that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala and started to laugh. And he said, no, I have left my children very independent from any form of monetary gain. And he said, I have heard from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man qara'a surat al-waqi'ah kulla laylatin lam tusibhu faqa. Anyone who reads surat al-waqi'ah every night before going to sleep, then poverty will never come to him. Never come to him. Now brothers here who are worried about the credit crunch, <laughs> about the credit crunch, the easiest thing for us to do is read surat al-waqi'ah. It would only take 10 minutes maximum. Read surat al-waqi'ah and guarantee my respected brothers, Allahu Akbar, in your entire life never will a time come that you will perhaps need to stretch out your hands to someone. If you read it, of course, with this intention for the pleasure of Allah and to gain the virtue that is mentioned in the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unfortunately, with Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an, and I want to even explain this, my respected brothers, which is very important. Even brothers from amongst the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'at at times don't have respect for Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala. The Shia and the Rawafis are well known that they deplete all their energy in defaming the character of Sahabai Kiram Ajma'in. But coming from the mouths of those who claim to be Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaat, it is shocking. You will find some brothers even to say that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an is a Sahabi who was very forgetful. Wala hawla wala quwa. In fact, they have even said that he was senile. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood was senile. As they say that, uh, if you could actually trim the leaves, then why do you need to chop the tree? If you could trim the leaves, why do you need to chop the tree? But here, foolish people chop the tree, even when they had the power just to trim the leaves, but they want to chop the tree. Now because the fiqah of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi, not entirely, partly is all associated with the teachings of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. And you will find a lot of people, and especially the Salafiyah movement that's out there, those that promotes, that there is no need to take one as an Imam, be it Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahmatullah alayhi, many people. And in order, again, those who have grudge against the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi, because the foundation that has been laid is 
on the back of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an, so they come out with all sorts of excuses. All sorts of excuses. You'll find individuals. Sometimes they'll say to you that, oh, you know when you perform your namaz, why don't you do rafa'iyadain? When you go into ruku, lift up your hands. When you stand up for ruku, lift up your hands. Subhanallah, that is a hadith. There is no problem. But when you have an imam, like Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, who choose not to do rafa'iyadain, then how can anyone say that this is against the sunnah or contrary to the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is very, very wrong. And these brothers should have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts to belittle any sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. This is sheer ignorance. Now just to give you the connection of Imam Abu Hanifa with Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and generally I often like to quote hadith which have been narrated by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullah alayhi even if there is a narration in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari or Imam Muslim why? because Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal is the teacher of Imam Bukhari Imam Ahmad is the teacher of Imam Bukhari. So maybe a hadith in Bukhari will have six teachers as in the chain of narrate, narration. But in the case of a hadith which is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, you might only have three individuals. Brothers, do you understand what I'm saying? And now I want to show you the connection of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud with Hazrat Imam Adam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. Please bear with me. I have here in front of me a chart. For a, lot of, a lot of the brothers who feel that, who is this a, a spurious individual? Who is Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi? We have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here. And we have yeah. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala an here. And we have Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Uthman here. And then we have Hazrat Imam Adam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. Inshallah. If brothers can just listen to me as an explanation. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood passed away in Madinatul Munawwara, but during the Khilafat of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala had established a complete new city by the name of Kufa. Kya naam tha? Kufa, a new city. And we had actually mentioned this in the Khilafat of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And what he did is that he appointed two companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to settle in Kufa to make sure that everything in Kufa is running in accordance to the Sharia. One would be appointed as a governor whose name is Hazrat Ammar and the other comes as a great teacher for the people of Kufa whose name is Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. So Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala had moved to Kufa from Madinatul Munawwara. What he did in, Madi- in Kufa was to teach individuals the Sharia, subhanallah, the Quran and the Sunnah. And it is said that the individuals that had moved in Kufa were all of scholarly caliber. All of them were people who were well versed in the Quran and also in the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Hazrat Ali during his Khilafat came to Kufa, what he did is that he had shifted the capital for the Muslimin from Medina to Kufa. So now during in the Khilafat of Hazrat Ali, the capital for the Muslims is Kufa. And when he came to Kufa and when he noticed the level of knowledge that was with the people of Kufa, he was shocked. And he said, may Allah have mercy on Abdullah ibn Mas'ud for he is the one who has filled the hearts of the people of Kufa with a lot of knowledge. When Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood moved to Kufa, it is said that a thousand Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een followed him. And some of them were from, 70 of them were those who participated in the battle of Badr. 
300 of them from among Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een were those who had pledged allegiance at the hands of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the tree. We spoke about uh, Bay'atur Rizwan. Subhanallah al-Azim. And so Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu ta'ala an lived in Kufa. When Hazrat Ali during his Khilafat what he did is that he had appointed a very famous Tabi'een whose name is Qazi Shureh. Kya naam hai? Qazi Shureh. Very famous individual. Famously known for his arbitration, for his decision making. Very famous. In fact, even Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an is famously known to be the best judge in Islam. As Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, وَأَقْضَاهُمْ Ali. When it comes to decision, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an's decisions were very sharp and precise. Even then he had appointed Hazrat Qazi Shureh. And Qazi Shureh was the student of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Now from amongst the thousands of students of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the most famous student was a, a man whose name was Al-Qama. Kya naam tha? Al-Qama. He was such a brilliant student of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, What I know, Al-Qama knows. What did he say? He was not a Sahabi. Now this is testimony that comes from a Sahabi for a non-Sahabi. Imagine. What I know, Al-Qama knows. And so after Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Hazrat Al-Qama was considered to be the most famous jurist in Kufa. When Hazrat Al-Qama passed away, it is said that from amongst the students of Hazrat Al-Qama, the most famous student was Ibrahim Nakhai. Ibrahim Nakhai. Ibrahim Nakhai was such a famous jurist that when he passed away, Hazrat Sha'bi, who was a tabi'in, who had seen 500 Sahabai Kiram Ajma'in, he was present at the Janaza Namaz of Hazrat Ibrahim Nakhai. He said that the, the greatest Muslim jurist has passed away. Someone contested and he said, are you saying that he was even better than Hazrat Hassan Basri? And Hazrat Shabi said, he was even more learned than Hassan Basri. He was more learned than the people of Hijaz, than the people of Kufa, than the people of Basra. This was Ibrahim Nakhai. Now when Ibrahim Nakhai was not well, some of his students said, Hazrat, after your demise, who do you want us to go to? Who do you refer us to go to? And he said, go to Hamad ibn Suleiman. Go to Hamad ibn Suleiman. And Hamad ibn Suleiman was the famous teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa. It is said from amongst the, the students of Hamad ibn Suleiman, the most famous student was Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi And this is the connection of the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa with this great Sahabi whose name is Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. So Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an had taught Hazrat Al-Kama. Hazrat Al-Kama had taught Hazrat Ibrahim Nakhai. Ibrahim Nakhai had taught Hazrat Hamad ibn Suleiman. Hazrat ibn Hamad ibn Suleiman's teacher, uh, his brilliant student was Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. And it is said, this has been documented when the grand sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an came to Kufa, all of the people of Kufa came to greet him, and from amongst the people was also Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah. And that is why Imam Abu Hanifa has been given the title to be a tabi'in, that he has actually seen the companions of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from amongst the students of Imam Adam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi, subhanallah, you know, it is shocking when you find individuals. And the new Muslims are the people who are most targeted. You will find new Muslims, anyone who is a new Muslim, very quickly a group of individuals will pick them up and say, right, you know, you have to do this, this is in the hadith, this is in the hadith, this is in the hadith. This is in the hadith. And they have no clue. They have no understanding. They have no knowledge. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Look at the students. And these are the direct students. 
of Imam Abu Hanifa. The first man here is Yahya ibn Zakariya. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mubarak is the teacher of Imam Muslim. Who is he? The Sahih Muslim that we talk of. And we always talk about Bukhari and Muslim. Imam Bukhari's teachers are the students of Imam Abu Hanifa. So Abdullah ibn Mubarak and you get also Hazrat Yahya ibn Mu'in here and Imam Abdul Razak, Imam Zufar, Imam Abu Yusuf. And look at Imam Abu Yusuf. Imam Abu Yusuf is the teacher of Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari, Imam Abu Dawud, Imam Abu Ya'la and Imam Abu Yusuf is the most famous student of Hazrat Imam Azam, Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi it is shocking for me when I find individuals who come that they are Hanafis and they have always been Hanafis. And please forgive me, I am not advocating for people just to become Hanafis. No, no, Allahu Akbar. We have the greatest respect for Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. What we are saying, uh, that if you are a Hanbali, remain a Hanbali all the time. If you are a Maliki, stay a Maliki. If you are a Shafi, stay a Shafi. And if you are a Hanafi, stay a Hanafi. But Allahu Akbar, don't remove your seat belts. Don't remove your seat belts. Don't become a mujtahid yourself. Don't mess around with the internet. Don't play around with the translations of the book of a hadith. That will one day deviate you from the path of Islam. One thing to remember my respected brothers... All of the people who became murtad, murtad samjana, who apostated from Islam, if you read their history, you will always find that before apostating, they became those who did not follow the fiqh of any of the imams. And only when they became uh, those who did not follow any of the imams, they felt that they know a lot of the things and slowly they deviated from the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. These were great individuals who were living during until the time of Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. An. One other sahabi, just few minutes, who passed away during the khilafat of Hazrat uh, Uthman was Abdul Rahman bin Auf. Abdul Rahman bin Auf was another multi-millionaire, the wealthiest sahabi during the time of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some have said that his wealth was even more than the wealth of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala. So much wealth. In one sitting, he gave 80,000 gold coins to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one appeal of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave 500 camels and 500 horses to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he came to Madinatul Munawwara, believe it or not, he came penniless. Everything was taken from him by the mushrikeen of Makkah. So when he came to Madinatul Munawwara, a lot of the Ansari companions sympathized with him. They knew of his uh, reputation to be a, a great businessman. And they said, Abdul Rahman, maybe if we can give you some capital to start your business. He said, no, 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 no. Just tell me, show me the road to the marketplace of Madinah. The market of Medina. And he said, go straight, this is where the market is. And he started his business from there. And he said that once he was coming out from the market, and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him. He was a handsome man. Hazrat Abdul Rahman said to him, Hazrat Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman, it is high time you got married. It is high time you got married now in Medina. And Allah's Nabi said to him, when you get married, make sure you do walima. Make sure you do Walima and said, even if it means to slaughter one goat, don't forget, do your Walima. And he says, of course I will do Walima. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Abdul Rahman. What a businessman he was. What a, he was a, a millionaire and billionaire in Makkah and now in Medina Munawwara he is striving hard to earn a good livelihood. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him a dua and all he said is, Allah give you barakah. Allahu Akbar. And this dua was accepted. Talk about barakah. My respected brothers and elders, so much barakah. Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf would say, if I was to sell a stone, I would get the value of gold. This was the barakah he got, you see. 
This is Barkat, Allahu Akbar. So much Barkat. In fact, he was the man after the demise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who would finance and make sure that a lot of wealth is given to all of the wives of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once there was a lot of commotion in Madinatul Munawwara. A lot of people came out and people were out. Amma Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha also came out and said, What is this noise? Subhanallah, what were they witnessing? 700 camels have just entered the city of Medina fully laden with goods and bags of food and everything. Subhanallah. And people were saying, this is the wealth of Abdul Rahman bin Auf. 700 camels entering Medina Munawwara. And Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, what is the noise? And they said, well, it's nothing. It is just uh, some of the camels that are entering Medina Munawwara. And she said, which camels? She says, well, 700 camels. 700 camels. And when he saw that people are looking at the wealth, subhanallah, these people were, were individuals who were connected to Allah. Dunya meant nothing to them. He came and he looked at Amma Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and she was in Parda. She was in Parda. And he said to her, all what you see, O mother of the believers, is in the path of Allah. I don't want anything. Take everything in the path of Allah. It is said that before his demise, he called a sahabi. Remember, Abdul Rahman bin Auf is one from amongst the ten who was given the Basharat of Jannah. He played a key role in installing Hazrat uh, Uthman as the third Khalifa. He was the man who appointed Hazrat Uthman as the third Khalifa. He was the one who was given the charge. And it is said that before his demise, he made a wasiya that when I die, I want to give 400 dirhams to all of those companions who are still alive and who participated in the battle of Badr. Ulama had mentioned that they counted a total of 100 Badri Sahabi who were still alive. And he had four wives. He had? Four wives. Brothers, just have one wife. <laughs> just have one wife. Don't have four wives. Just have one wife. That is better. Four of the wives were given, with all the wealth being distributed, 80,000 dirhams. Each of them still got 80,000 dirhams. He still had properties in Syria. And it is said so much gold was in the house that people would have to take spades to move the gold from one section to another section, so the hairs can be, it, the, the wealth can be bequitted to the family members. They, they would use spades to lift the dinar, the gold coins. This was the wealth that was given to Hazrat. It is said when he passed away, in the vicinity of Jannatul Baqi, there were 1,000 camels that were still grazing, all belonging to Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf, 100 horses belonging to Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf, 3,000 goats in the area of Jannatul Baqi that were all belonging to Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf. Subhanallah what a, what a sahabi he was. Huh? Subhanallah. And he was the man also. He looked after so many of the companions, including the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he passed away, Hazrat Uthman bin Affan again was given the privilege to perform his janaza namaz. So during the Khilafah, three companions have been mentioned. Hazrat Abbas, Hazrat Uthman read the janaza. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood, Hazrat Uthman read the janaza. And Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Hazrat Uthman read the janaza. Allah give us the tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma sari ala sayyidina. ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله والسلام تسليما إخاتون بحث بيمار هي دعاء الله رب العالمين أنكم شفاء ده إسي طريقة سي إخاتون كا انتقال أجواء هي دعاء الله رب العالمين أنكم خبر كم نور فرماي وار آخرت كي تمام منازل أنكم لي آسان كرده أنكم خبر كم جنات كي باغو مسيك باغ بناي 
اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وسلم تسليما اللهم اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين اللهم اشفنا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشفنا اللهم اشف مرضانا وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته واهل بيته اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين